Welcome to a team selection video for Game Week 4. This is where I'm going to be recapping how Game Week 3 went and my plans going into Game Week 4. The captaincy, the transfers. Will I be bringing Ronaldo in? And if so, how will I do that? Well, you'll find out in this video. So without further ado, let's head straight into it. Thank you to everyone for the support over the last few weeks. It's been absolutely insane. And there will be a rating your team videos, including wildcard drafts, coming very soon to the channel. So stay tuned for that. And you can always follow me on Twitter and Instagram, as you can see on the right hand side of your screen. And you can also contact me there, send in your teams after every single game week uh, in preparation for the upcoming deadline. And then I can rate your teams in live streams and also in videos. And this time it will be in video format. And in terms of the kind of live streams of course I'll be letting you guys know and asking for your feedback uh, but I can just always kind of rate your teams if you put them through the live chat instead of actually sending images but enough of all that in terms of my actual rank at the moment I'm around 153k in the world 246 points overall and in game week three I got 68 points and as you can see here my captaincy worked very well for me Antonio did the business Tony got a goal although he did get a yellow card Danny Ng's the same thing really he got an assist but he also got a yellow card Bruno Fernandes very disappointing that's yet another blank and of course with Ronaldo coming in now a lot of people are shipping him out which is obviously something you would never have expected after his hat-trick against Leeds on the opening day and the defence was actually pretty solid for me, at least Luke Shaw and Trent. Sanchez and Ailing a bit kind of mixed bag, didn't do the business for me. Greenwood once again come in clutch for Manchester United and Ben Rama. I brought him in, didn't do the business yet, maybe he will going into the future. And Salah with a double digit return against Chelsea and of course it was only because of the penalty but you know, you'll still take it. And as for my bench, no one really did anything of note and Simicas, a bit interesting, did come on off the bench but he's not going to be starting games from now on um, so that's how my team is looking like and to be fair game week three wasn't too bad I went up quite significantly from around 250k I believe 250k so not going to complain too much it's been a very solid start similar to last season hopefully I can keep the momentum going and looking into my team for game week four as it stands I would be starting Ben White against Norwich at home and Arsenal have got quite a few players coming back and I discuss all of the fixtures by the way in yesterday's preview so if you want check that out and I look at the team overall and a lot of good fixtures but then again there's a lot of players that I don't have like Calvert-Lewin, Ronaldo who could do absolutely great this week um, and then of course we've got some kind of injuries uh, occurring like Hyunming Son. Um, he's got a calf injury of course it's a bit precautionary if anything but still something to look at and then Lukaku he's got a thigh injury he might not be ready for game week four and of course we're gonna have to be waiting until the press conferences uh, a day or two before the deadline before kind of finalizing our moves and yeah Trent Alexander-Arnold I think can do well against Leeds although honestly it's really the attackers like Jota and Salah, where I'm expecting the points to come from. Luke Shaw at home to Newcastle, pretty decent. Then we've got Sanchez away to Brentford. I'm actually not even too uh, confident about that. And hopefully, you know, if Brighton do concede, it's to Ivan Tony, who is in my team. Uh, that's if I do keep him in the end. And Ben Rama and Antonio double up against Southampton away. I don't expect too many goals for West Ham, but I think they can score two or three, potentially. And it could be quite an even game. As I discussed in my preview video, I kind of give a kind of a unorthodox prediction for that match amongst many others I've got a double up in United attack Greenwood and Bruno Fernandes but I'm not too confident in Bruno as I once was although with Greenwood a lot of people will think he's going to be benched I think he still will start for the time being but there will come a time where he's going to start being benched especially with the Champions League coming in and Rashford returning from injury and in terms of you know the rest of the team, Ings away to Chelsea is looking pretty poor. Um, you could even arguably play someone else over him, even Brownhill, but I probably wouldn't do that. I think Ings is still more likely to outscore him. Ivan Tony, as I discussed before, hopefully him or Sanchez get a return. And if both of them do, you know that'd be great, but that's very unlikely. And in terms of the captaincy, I originally had it on Bruno Fernandes, but with Ronaldo now confirmed to Manchester United... I'm just tempted by Salah. As things stand, if I don't bring Ronaldo in, I think Salah will be my captain. Bruno's my vice. I'd be pretty happy with that. And you know what? I know there's kind of a lot of doom and gloom surrounding Bruno. I still think he can do really well and still reach the 200-point mark 
across the whole season. It's just I don't see him reaching the heights of last season and just not having penalties potentially and also set pieces. I just think it reduces his appeal significantly and also just kind of reduces his ceiling, which obviously last season he got so many double-digit returns. I'm just not so sure if that's, that's going to be the case from now on. And yeah, the bench, as you can see, it's not too strong and obviously Foster's injured, but that's not really a concern. Ailing has very good fixtures from Gaming 5 onwards, so he's not really kind of a cause for concern in that regard. Simicas, I wouldn't mind keeping him, but if I want Jota, that would require getting rid of Simicas on a minus four potentially and also bringing in Ronaldo. So there's different ways I can go about it. I'm going to be showing you my transfer plans very shortly. Danny Ings, I always kind of had this transfer in mind, moving him on to Calvert-Lewin. Maybe that won't be the case now with Ronaldo in the Premier League, but still, it's something worth considering, and I'm trying to keep my options open. And by the way, Cavalier, yet another player who is flagged, and ironically, it's Antonio who, you know, playing on international duty, he's still fit and he's still available. And yeah, despite his injury prone record, he is still fit. And yeah, apart from that, really, Danny Ings, maybe Simicas, and one or two others, I'm not really too kind of bothered about having some of these players, maybe Ben White uh, potentially, but some very good fixtures coming up for Arsenal. And honestly, this team looks decent, you know, for game week uh, four, kind of excluding Danny Ings, but the rest looks pretty solid. And now let's look at how my team is looking like in game week four with the transfer plans in mind. And in terms of the defence, if I were to bring Jota in, of course, I've got three Liverpool players already. That requires a minus four hit by getting rid of Simicas. I'm definitely not going to be removing Trent Alexander-Arnold or Mohamed Salah. So it would be Simicas making way. And I'd kind of try to upgrade him to a 4.5 million defender. I'd actually have 4.8 million available if I bring in Jota and Ronaldo also. And unfortunately, because of Simicas's price drop, I'd be 0.1 million off from getting Nelson Semedo. But then again, Semedo does seem like a bit of a troll. He's got a lot of good underlying attacking stats, but I'm just not so sure if he's going to deliver on the hype. Of course, I could be completely wrong about that. And I just remember last season, there was kind of a similar period that Wolves entered and Semedo just didn't do the business. But Marcel at 4.5 million, I wouldn't mind him too much. The kind of key problem I have is in regards to his security of starts. It could be Aitnuri coming in from time to time, especially against the kind of weaker teams. But Marcel is still, in my opinion, a very good option so long as he plays. And he offers a bit more attacking threat than Cody. Now, normally I say that Cody is probably Wolves' most nailed defender. However, there are some rumours that Cody could lose his spot. So still, I'm considering both of them as kind of a Simicast replacement. There's also the Spurs defenders like Dyer, Tanganga, although as I discussed with him before, with the arrival of Emerson at Spurs, I just think that Tanganga could lose his spot unless Nuno kind of changes to a back five, places Tanganga as a kind of right centre back and then Emerson plays as a right wing back. There's different ways they can go about it, uh, but still, I think a Wolves or Spurs defender is something I'd be intrigued in and I have good defensive depth in my opinion. Of course, it's not perfect. I still want a Chelsea defender going forward, uh, but for the time being, I think I'd be pretty satisfied with that. And the reason why at the moment I'm considering Jota instead of maybe someone like Ferran Torres is just because Firmino is out. He's most likely, if not definitely, missing game week four and maybe another game week or two. So Jota should continue to start and he's been in great form and he can definitely continue that, no doubt about it. His underlying stats are right up there with Salah, and he's significantly cheaper. When I look at Ferran Torres, there's De Bruyne and Foden coming back to Manchester City. Although they probably will be benched against Leicester, you'd expect them to be back in the fray very soon, and Ferran Torres is just going to be a constant rotation risk. It's a bit similar to Mares towards the beginning of the season when everyone was kind of raving about him, including myself, but, you know, with Pep and all these kind of players, it's very difficult to predict who's going to be starting and when they're going to kind of be getting the minutes you want in order to perform really well. So, honestly, I just prefer Jota over Ferran Torres in this moment in time, and this is something I discussed in my previous streams and videos when people are asking me, do you prefer Greenwood, Jota or Ferran Torres? And kind of a personal opinion, at this moment in time, I prefer Greenwood, then Jota, then Ferran Torres, but they're all very good. You can't go wrong with any of them. And Ferran Torres, so long as he plays, of course, he's just he offers great value, maybe the best in the game around his price. So, you know, they're all good options. You can't go wrong. But I just think I have a bit more confidence in Jota. And also Liverpool's fixtures are very good for a prolonged period of time. Manchester City have some pretty difficult ones coming up and with the Champions League coming into the mix, I just don't really see Ferran Torres being nailed every single week. But that's kind of my two cents on the matter. And then the other transfer that kind of would be involved here is bringing in Ronaldo, of course, for Danny Ings. I think it just makes complete sense. 
there are kind of rumours, according to The Sun anyway, that Ronaldo will probably not start in game week four against Newcastle. And whilst that's a possibility, I'll be honest, I don't trust The Sun. And still, you know, Ronaldo, even with only two or three training sessions, he's still capable of playing against Newcastle. And of course, he just always wants to play. Maybe game week four, it's a possibility he won't start. But I don't know. I just I wouldn't be too sure about that. Uh, maybe as we get closer to the deadline, if we have a bit more information from Ole Gunnar Solskjaer or somewhere else, which is kind of reliable, uh, then maybe I will kind of make a firm decision on that. Another thing I can do instead of getting Ronaldo is getting Dominic Calvert-Lewin if he's fit. Of course, that's kind of a big if at the moment. A lot of people expect him to be missing game week four or at least not being fully fit. And that is a problem, of course. Uh, but Dominic Calvert-Lewin, in my opinion, the second best striker around his price tag. There's Lukaku as well. He's an injury doubt, so I'm definitely steering clear from him for the time being. He should be fine by game week seven, and that's when I would want him anyway. And then, yeah, Jota, of course, will be coming in for Bruno Fernandes. And I just think it's kind of a sensible choice there to kind of take a bit of money away from the midfield and invest it into the attack. And then, of course, Marcel will be coming in for Simicast. So at this moment in time, what I am thinking of, and of course, feel free to let me know what you think down in the comment section below, as well as asking your own questions. What do you think? So Simicast to Marcel, Bruno Fernandes to Jota, and Danny Ings to Ronaldo for a minus four hit. And if not, I could just take, well, no hits really, make two free transfers, get Ferran Torres instead of Jota, and Ronaldo up front, or if not, could get Dominic Calvert-Lewin for Danny Ings. But I definitely want to be using a transfer here. I think it would make sense. It would strengthen my team, not only for game week four, but also going forward. And I don't want to burn a transfer, to be honest. I think using every single one, if possible, is kind of, I wouldn't say key, but it does help. And uh, in the end, maybe a few weeks down the line, you'll be thinking, why didn't I use that transfer when I had two available? And I literally just burned one. Um, I don't think it's really a big cause for concern. And of course, with the Wolves players, they're always kind of a big talking point. Some people might recommend Triori instead, but I'm kind of preferring their defensive assets at the moment. I just want to go with them first, and then if their attackers and midfielders are showing a lot of promise, I might start jumping on the Wolves players. But yeah, that's how my team would be looking like. If Ronaldo does come in, he'd probably be my captain, and Salah would be my vice. Uh, but for the time being, if I don't do that, Salah's my captain, and probably Bruno will be my vice. And I just, I don't know, with Jota and Ferran Torres, there's always kind of an interesting debate to be had there, but I think I'd be favouring the Portuguese international. And then with Wolves and Spurs, to be honest, I'm kind of torn, but because of the long fixture run that Wolves have, that's why at the moment I've got Marcel in this kind of draft of my transfers. But of course, feel free to let me know what you think. And thank you very much for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, smash the like button and subscribe if you're new around here. And share this video around with anyone who loves FPL, UCL Fantasy, or just football in general, really. And there's going to be more UCL Fantasy videos coming to the channel, including a deadline stream just before the matches kick off next Tuesday. So stay tuned for that. And yeah, appreciate all the support, of course as always and uh, I'm trying to keep in touch with as many of you as possible and good luck with game week four good luck with the rest of the season and of course I'll be back rating your teams and wildcard drafts very soon so stay tuned for that also and I'll see you next time